May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith. He says that if they would just use the faith they have, they could uproot trees and cause them to be planted in the sea. Jesus liked hyperbole. I've never met a Christian who has successfully told a mulberry tree to go and plant itself in the sea. And I have met some stellar Christians. Lord, increase my faith is a prayer that most of us have prayed. This prayer stems from an awareness that our faith needs help that relying on our own meager resources isn't enough. We're not self-sufficient. Yet because we do have faith, as small as a grain of mustard seed, we have been able to accomplish some remarkable things together. Reliant on the power of God at work among us, our collective faith has brought Syrian refugee families to security and a new life in this country. Faith like the kind modeled by Chris Leonard, for example, kept us going through more than two frustrating years of pandemic shutdown. Faith affirms that God is at work in all circumstances, guiding and strengthening us. Such fueling faith comes from beyond. We do not create it. We cannot earn it, nor summon it up on demand. We can simply receive it as it is offered. Faith is a gift. It is not an emotion or a feeling. It is not an opinion. It is a conviction. It is our response to the mystery of God. Faith starts with awe and wonder at this mystery. The Hebrew word for faith means steadfast loyalty. It's easy to be loyal when things are going well, when we're prospering, when the market is up and the weather is good. It's more difficult when we seem surrounded by troubles and are tempted to despair. Yet God desires to share the gift of faith that sense of ultimate security, not based on the fluctuating vicissitudes of life, but a faith grounded in God's own loyal, steadfast love. Faith stems from our relationship with this God. The best way to increase our faith, I think, is simply by walking by faith day by day, whatever the weather. Walking in relationship with God. Faith increases as faith is exercised. If we don't use it, it atrophies. But using it causes our faith to grow, to strengthen like a muscle. Faith begets faith. St. Paul makes this point to young Timothy. You learn this faith from your grandmother, Lois, and from your mother, Eunice. Faith is modeled. Faith begets faith. Your faith helps me. Your faith strengthens me, inspires me makes God real.
We don't need to worry about having more faith, Jesus reminds us. We just need to put to use the faith we have and then say, we're unworthy servants. We are only here doing our duty. Over the years, my paltry faith has may not have moved mountains, but I've tried to do my duty as a parish priest while clinging fiercely to the faith of others. Which prompts the question, what is the church for? What does the church offer? A weekly lecture series on ancient religion? A weekly feel-good seminar? Tips on self-improvement? A weekly rally for the latest social justice fad? No. First and foremost, God's church, the temple of the church, built upon the foundation of the prophets and apostles, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, is a seedbed of faith. It's a seminary. It's a place where growth can take place, where faith can increase. In my experience here at the Seminary of Grace, we've been able to offer a rich environment conducive to growth in faith, which I trust will continue. Of course, that's one reason why the church can feel threatening. Some people don't want to grow. They feel they have no need to grow. Their minds are made up. Their attitudes fixed. They have nothing more to learn. No insights to be gained. And maybe most of all, they don't want to be spiritually challenged. <laughs> confronted with their need for growth. Maybe people don't think they're revisable, that anything more can be done with me. They've lost faith. They're hopeless. They've given up. They're beyond repair. As good as dead. We know growth can be painful as anyone who has learned a language or learned the piano or been a parent realizes. That's why we don't much like rehearsing our irregular verbs or practicing our scales or changing diapers at 2 a.m. But in retrospect, we're grateful we grew. What did Cardinal Newman say? Growth, the only evidence of life. Along with our parents, God stimulates growth. And out of the rich compost of our sins and failings, our weakness and disappointments, God elicits life, growth, slowly, imperceptibly. Transformation is occurring. This month, my twin sister and I celebrated our 70th birthdays. As I ponder the rest of my life, the last thing I want to do is to remain the same as I am today. I'm just starting to figure it out, what's important and what isn't. I'm learning, growing, figuring out that life is more about giving than getting. Life is for loving ourselves, others like ourselves, and God. What did the Archbishop of Canterbury say at the late Queen's funeral, 
Those who love and serve will be loved and remembered longer than those who cling to power and privilege are long forgotten. Someone once asked the great Harvard philosopher William James at age 70 if he believed in immortality. He replied, never strongly, but more so as I grow older. <laughs> and why is that? Because I'm just getting fit to live. Like William James, I feel that the seven decades of my life have been a stretching, educative experience, a prolonged process which has shaped me, making me more fit to live. Maybe at long last, after years of work and school, parenting and pastoring, I can cease from the task of human becoming simply be a human being, being. Perhaps it's being a recent grandparent or retirement or the simple specter of mortality which is shifting my perspective. As Dr. Johnson remarked in a different context, when a man knows he is to be hanged in a fortnight, it concentrates his mind wonderfully. Advancing age brings with it a self-inventory, a re-evaluation of priorities, a shifting of perspective and values. All this is salutary and part of life's faith's journey. The great Swiss psychologist Carl Jung wrote, we cannot live the afternoon of life according to the program of life's morning. For what was great in the morning will be little at evening. And what in the morning was true will at evening have become a lie. Growth, the only evidence of life. Christianity is not a maintenance religion. It's a growth religion, growth in faith, into the heart and mind of Christ, God's church providing the seedbed for growth, the seminary. Lord, increase our faith. Fertilize in us the seed you have planted, that the harvest of our lives may be bountiful. <laughs>